All right. Thanks for coming back to Black and White Christianity, episode nine. Today, we're going to be talking about disciplining ch children, uh, specifically in the home, specifically uh, how we should be going about doing this. What does the Bible say about doing this? I'm your host, Walter Mitchell. Very guys. And we're thankful you're here with us. We are so glad to have this opportunity. So what are we talking about tonight? Well, we're talking about the what what is it biblically say about disciplining children? Tari, do you see a lack thereof? Absolutely. In this, in this area? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. There's a there's a lack, there's a lack of uh people uh you know taking a responsibility to show their children things. A lot of people are very uh passive in the raising of their children. I don't know why people think that children are going to develop manners and uh you know uh proper etiquette or anything like that without being taught, without being instructed. And they think that it's just going to manifest itself. Oh, that's how it happened for me. No, it did not. So I just, it's, it's, we, we talk about it often and it just feels like a very, very lazy, uh, you know, uh, just an approach to everything. So I'm going to be talking about that here in a little bit as well. So I think, I think, I think you hit a, I think you hit a nail on the head there with lazy and we're going to integrate that into this tonight as well about what laziness has to play a part in disciplining your children. I'm going to start us off in the word. Uh, so let's go to Proverbs 22, starting in verse six. This is one of the scriptures I watched. Start a start children off on the way they should go. And even when they are old, they will not turn from it. Ultimately, what we're trying to do tonight is find out, discuss why all of a sudden disciplining your child is second to everything else or not done at all. I think you hit laziness. To start a child off means to set them on a path to success. You're starting them off. You're telling them this is the foundation. This is the standard that needs to be upheld for you to flourish. And this idea to kind of, there you go, figure it out, doesn't work. And here's the main reason it doesn't work. All of us who have, ch have had children have realized what original sin looks like. If you don't know, if you don't believe in original sin, you haven't had children. Children don't need to be taught to lie to you, to scream, to holler, to throw on the ground, throw tantrums. They don't, no one teaches them that. Me and my wife didn't go, all right, this is how it goes. Ah, and just laid on the floor so they could figure that one out. That came naturally to them. And so naturally, it has to be taught out of them because it will just yeah, remain. Okay. Address, thank you. That's such a a better word mm -hmm. to use there. Um, here's, a, here's a big taboo word now, spanking. Why is that so terrible in today's culture? Why is that so frowned upon to spank a child? Oh, um, no, man, they'll just die. They'll fall apart if you do. You didn't know that? You didn't know if you give them a little tap, they'll just disassemble? It's crazy. You can't put those back together once they break either. It's over. Yeah, man, ch children, man, like not beating your children is so taboo. Like you eat, even like a little bit of a flinch or something like that, like, hey, cut that out. Raising your voice too sharply is like a little too much for grown people. I don't know. I don't know when that started, and I don't have an answer for it either. But uh, like you said, I also want to go ahead and jump in the scripture right away. We're going to um, read Deuteronomy chapter 6, 6 through 7. It says, um, where are we at here? These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts and press them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Wow. Wow. You want to talk about does that does any of that sound lazy? Does any of that sound passive to you when you hear it? Absolutely not. Man, like this is every aspect of your life. It just seems like pretty much it says always. Teach them always. Any any opportunity that you get pretty much is an opportunity to teach them, to show them, to rear them, whatever you want to call it. It's a constant thing and as a believer there should be nothing casual about your walk as a believer right on down to raising your children this is an intentional walk 
all the way through. You have to know what the Bible says that the Lord wants from us, and then you have to apply that. And there's no room for, I don't feel like it today, or ah, I'll let them slide, or whatever the case may be. The Bible tells us if we do not, if we do not discipline our children, we do not love our children. So your thoughts. I think that there is a lack of wanting to get it ourselves as well. How can you teach unless you don't go learn? You understand? If you weren't disciplined, there's this level of resentment that happens, right? My dad spanked me. I never liked that. So now I'm not going to do it to my kids. But I turned out okay. But I'm not doing that to them because I didn't like it when I was young. What? So now all of a sudden, I don't want to impose upon them discipline and structure because I remember my younger self kind of hating that, even though my older self has benefited from said discipline. So I want to roll that into my second verse here because you've already lightly touched on it. Um, stealing my thunder. <laughs> um, it's Proverbs 13, 24. Four. Whoever spares the rod hates their child, but the one who loves their child is careful to discipline them. So in this scenario, we see here in scripture, in the Proverbs, if you do not discipline your child, you don't love them. You don't love them because you don't care enough about how they turn out to be involved. Like what you said, that is somebody who is on it. You cannot talk to them while you're sitting at home, on the road, with them all the time. That is a person who is diligent. We don't have diligent people anymore that are day in and day out hammering out the, the law of the Lord into their children because there's a level of not caring. I hate that phrase. I don't care. And there's a level of them showing they don't care. You don't care about how your children turn out because you don't put them to task in, via the word spank them, slap their hand, give them a thump here and there. I'm not talking about abuse. So let me, let me wash that away real quick before we hear from that in the comments. So you guys talk about abuse. I'm not talking about abuse. I'm not talking about you smacking somebody upside the head with a frying pan. Okay. I'm talking about hand to backside or on some other parts. And I'm not talking about you full manning that thing. Okay. So I just want to get that out there before we get accused of that here. Um, it's, I want it's to I want to segue a little bit to like kind of double down on what you're saying. Um, this this is this is a lightly off topic, but y'all understand why I'm going there. When when what you are saying, like the to be diligent and be on your children and actually be present and and uh, putting the work in, we have to understand that this is big business now. What kind of service can you provide me that I can do less? This is big business. You look at Uber, you look at um, um, DoorDash, you look at all of these like different things. It's not just it's not just delivery food. Like now, now you don't want to go grocery shopping. Now you don't want to get uh, essential things for your home. You want to stay in and have that kind of stuff brought to your house at a price. Uh, you know what? You train my children. That that's a lot. You know, I got a lot going on. I have time for that. Let TV train my child. Let 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 the schooling system, the public schooling system, train my child. Let these let their influence from um you know their their peers and stuff like that train them up. And then when they get older, now I'm over here trying to reel them in. Like, hey, all these big things that you did, like that, it's too late now. You were supposed to get them when they were young, so they had that understanding as they grew, and you were supposed to double down and get focused and not and be attentive and and present when they were young to help them get to that point so when they are older they can hear sound doctrine they can hear good instruction they can hear um good advice but once they get to a certain age now they're in their ways you know it just like i know it at a certain age nobody could tell us anything we knew everything our parents knew nothing we knew that even as a believer, it's OK. It's OK. I know that's going to rub a few people wrong. Oh, my goodness. You weren't a perfect child. No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. I got whooped on. I got beat. And I still did things that I wasn't supposed to do. Why? Because we're still in the flesh. But 
the thing about it is, is that I was more apt to hear sound doctrine than I would have been if I would have just been left to the wolves to do whatever I want. If my mother wasn't there with a rod in hand talking about some, I'm gonna love you back to life. Getting whooped is love. We just seen this in the Bible. Like you said, we're not talking about abuse here, but you're doing something crazy. What's going to happen to you is if you are always just said, it's okay, you're expressing yourself, you're doing this and doing that. The lack of instruction that you give your child now, the world will give your child that instruction, but it's going to be at a severe cost. Like, oh, don't be stealing. Don't touch stuff that doesn't belong to you. And you didn't get that. And then you go on into the world as an adult and still or whatever. The handcuffs are getting locked on you. Now you're going to jail. And the, and the world is going to instruct you. The world does not love you. So once you get in there... <laughs> Last that, but as I'll just say here is that I would rather get a little correction, a little ride of correction now as a young person than grow and have to go to jail and deal with what goes on inside the penal system. Nobody cares about you there. Once you're in there, you're on your own or you lock up with some people. And to do that is a whole nother story for a whole nother podcast. You do not want the world getting you right before you get your correction at home is pretty much what I'm coming down on. I think you made a great point there about finding yourself so lazy that you want somebody else to do it for you, right? And then later on, you look at the scenario and it's like, well, how'd you turn out like that? Well, you weren't involved. So let's talk about how the repercussions of this on culture is. So I'm not disciplined at home. I have no structure. I'm lazy because the people that raised me were lazy. And so now I'm regurgitating what I was brought up doing. So now I don't go to work. I don't dress appropriately. I can't hold a job. I can't hold a relationship. I can't do any of that. Employers hate me because when I come in, I, I'm just a nightmare to them. And all of this stemmed from how you were raised. I hate to go back to the phrase, I look to the parents, but I look to the parents. You were the beginning version of their standard being set and you dropped the ball. And then you wondered why things played out the way they played out. You were the engine that started the car, okay? So if the car started down a bad way, that's your issue. You were the one that was driving it. So I, 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 I get irritated because you look around, and it's even prevalent in the church. Here's another uh, scenario. We're, gonna, we're always going to touch, it seems, in this podcast on church and culture. It's mm -hmm. always going to be in there because it, it's what we live in. When you have a family in church that does not reel in their home, man that does not reel in their home and has unruly children, that can be a cancer in the church via the other children because maybe they are reeled in. But when they get in the Sunday school or in the youth group around these unruly children, they start to pick up these bad habits. So you have to look at the collective as well. Same in a large family. If you have that one child that you favor and they go crazy and you're always trying to reel the other ones in, that will always be a dandelion in your fresh, perfect, pristine grass that sows all these seeds to then sprout other dandelions. So you have to crush that obstinance before it gets too bad. That's why we try to train them young. You spank your children when they're young. Nobody's walking around here spanking a 25-year-old. Should it be done? Maybe. Maybe. Maybe it should be done. <laughs> So, so, and I'm not, maybe it shouldn't have been a spanking. Maybe they should get the old one, two, like, Hey, wake up. I'm just saying that you cannot take a passive seat with your children. No one is going to care about them as much as you do. So if you, you don't care, how do you think? Uh, yeah. Or you would hope. Mm -hmm. You don't care enough to discipline them and set them on the right path. How do you think everybody else is going to deal with them? It's not going to go well. And we shouldn't continue to be in this place of, I don't, have, I don't even know what happened. How'd you, who taught you how to do that? Who taught you? The problem is not who taught me how to do this. Who never told me not to? So I just thought everything was okay. You never spent, smacked my hand when I went to grab that candy. So I just thought, hey, must be okay. So then when I got caught, you're like, well, who taught you how to steal? Well, nobody did. But you never told me it was wrong. So I just kept doing it. That's somebody who doesn't care enough about your uh, um, growing up, how you're getting together, how you uh, development. Thank you. Good grief. I got you, bud. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. Woo, mm -hmm. The one, two. They don't care enough about your development to 
invest. We have a bunch of people that would rather invest in other things than their children and the next generation. It's a multi-generational thing. I didn't, I didn't discipline you. I didn't spank you. I didn't put you in your place. So therefore, when you have children, now, we have, now I have unruly grandchildren. And I'm this grandpa that's always trying to look at, look at what I did with my last, with my children being like, I dropped the ball because I'm looking at the fruit of the labor I never did. It was just weeds that were sown. I love what you said there. Like that what you, all your points were great, but the one that really stuck out to me the most was uh, invest. You know, the mm. Bible tells us to be a good steward, you know, and a lot of people always want to take it to the financial aspect when they talk about stewardship. It's like financial. That's exactly what they're talking about. I got to do this with my money, do this with my money, all kind of stuff like that. The Bible is a spiritual book. When we talk about investment, we also need to look about investing into the brothers and sisters, the invest, investing into our children so they so they can be godly offspring. That's what we want for our children and for who our children are going to have to deal with. We want to create the environment, like you said, help them to develop and help them to uh, and, and invest in them. And you can't invest in somebody if you haven't invested first in yourself. First, you have to invest the time to be in scripture, to be able to tell them what they should be doing and how they should be doing it and then to an even further extent to show them where it is i used my mom my mom gave me the bible when i was young but she, it was more like here's the bible good luck there was no like hey this is where it says this and this is where it says that i'm not faulting her but i mean like these are the things that we have to do as as we develop we're supposed to be better versions of our parents so how your children turn out may possibly be a direct reflection of you. If you are not doing what you're supposed to do to invest in them and raise them up in the way that they should go, you will see that. You will see that in the fruit of them and how they live their life and different things like that. So let me um, let me go ahead and roll that into the scripture here. This is Hebrews chapter 12, um, verse 11. It says, no discipline seems pleasant at the time but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. So there you have it right there. Righteousness and peace by investing in your children, by showing them what they should do, by correcting them and putting them on the right path via discipline, um, uh, communication, and loving on them in that way is going to produce righteousness and peace. What do we not have all over, all around us? There's definitely no peace. And there's definitely a lack of righteousness because people do what they want. Like you said, nobody ever said, hey, do not do this thing. It's more about telling them what not to do because you, like you said, original sin. I don't have to teach you how to fall out and have a tantrum. I don't have to teach you how to steal. I don't have to teach you how to curse or anything like that. I don't have to teach you any of that stuff. You hear it and you repeat it. Nobody's teaching this stuff. This is just observation that's happening here. And then natural sin just playing out on its own. There has to be a correction, a line, a partition this is the line don't go over here don't do that because if you do you will be corrected and then once you get that kind of understanding as you grow you don't have to worry about that line you don't have to be there because you have been here and you've learned that being on this side of on righteousness produces good things and this side on uh, uh ungodliness produces the things that lead to destruction and Nobody hates their own body. So you're not going to do something against yourself that's going to cause you death if you've been taught to stay clear of that. And one of those main teachers is pain. Pain is a, a teacher. And most people want to say, oh, you know, that, you know, pain is going to come. This and that pain is a part of life. Pain doesn't have to kill you. But doing negative, being against scripture, doing the things that you want, eventually that will kill you. So your thoughts on that? We have, our children are arrows that we are sending out. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full. So 
for those of us that only have a couple children, we've only got a couple arrows to shoot out into the world. We got to make sure they fly straight. That's our job to make sure the arrows fly straight, to make sure they are an example of where they came from. That the whole thing of, oh, you were raised right. They are a reflection of you. And so if it doesn't, if it doesn't matter to you to spend the time, if you're too busy worrying about chasing money or the next hottest thing, or maybe you're more vested in your hobbies than your kids, maybe your children are more of an afterthought. That is not a godly way to raise your children. Your children should be a priority, period. So if they're not a priority, we, we have to start from square one. First, let's talk about why they should be a priority. And then after we get them to the priority number one in the family of raising them, now we have to figure out how. Well, we just, we just read a bunch of scriptures on what needs to happen here, right? When there needs to be a correction, it is your job, especially the father. Let's talk about the lack of manly Christians that don't want to step up and be a father. It's your job to set the standard for the children. If it's time to go to Spank Town, it's time to go to Spank Town. You did wrong. This a million chances thing, they don't learn. What they learn is you're weak. Oh, man, I could do this. He's just about to give me the old, don't do that again. What, what does that do? That's like constantly bailing somebody out for zero money. Did you steal that purse? Mm-hmm. Okay, you're going to go to jail for tonight, and then we're going to let you out in the morning. And I will steal again. Like, mm -hmm. there, there, is, there, is no, there is no punishment. So there's no burn factor. There's no pain factor. It's okay to laugh. You can laugh at that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's just, there has to be a deterrent. There's a deterrent in our society, air quotes. The justice system is all over the place. But there is a light deterrent in our society. Like you said earlier. Uh, if I don't get you right here and I leave you to your own devices out here, now the, 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 the culture is going to get after you and that's jail time. Now I, now I have a son or a daughter in jail and now they're going to pick up all kinds of other special little techniques in jail. And when they come out, it's going to be even worse. So it would behoove every believing Christian mother and father to invest in their children by disciplining them when i when you tell them not to do something and they do it what do you react with what's your immediate reaction hey don't do that i'm going to do that do you turn the other way because you really don't want to handle that you don't really you're tired you know it's a long day at work i really don't want to get after you you can't tell daddy's tired you're gonna get over there and break that vase all over the carpet it's time to die tired mm -hmm. it's worth it it is worth it so I, you have a story. You have a story that I think that everybody needs to hear. Um, it, it was uh, a woman. She was she was uh, going she was going to get a tattoo. Mm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I, I know the story you're talking about. You share that. Share that. So okay, all right. I heard a story one time of a woman that was financially poor, and she had children. And she had a decision to make, <clears throat> feed the children or get another tattoo. In that moment, she chose to get the tattoo, let the children go hungry. There is a parallel to that in our culture. What you're doing when you don't discipline your children is you are choosing something else. And most of the time, it's your laziness that you're choosing instead of stepping up to the plate and doing what you were supposed to do. Are we all perfect? No. Are we do, do sometimes we spank a little too hard or we do something out of anger? Sure, that happens. It happens to every father and mother. They get frustrated and something happens. I'm not saying that those things don't happen, but do you care? I think that's a big, big heading in this. Do you care enough? Majority of people would probably say, no, I don't. I don't care. Like you said earlier, the school will do it. I'll send them to school. They'll learn some real basic stuff, you know, how to sit there and don't talk, raise your hand. Uh, but everything else, I'm just, I'm just too busy. Our culture is a busy culture. We don't care. We have other stuff we'd rather do. And children were just a, a bipartisan thing. They were, they were just an extra thing. We're glad we have them, but we're not willing to just 
invest in them. And that's, that's too bad. We see it all the time. You see it all the time. Uh, different cultures are different. We've had this discussion before about the discipline in the different cultures. Um, I'm not going to touch on that fully in, in this because I think that's another podcast in general. But I think verse 24 in chapter 13 really stuck out. Whoever spares the rod hates their children. That is so foreign in our culture today. Why? Let me ask you this question. Why do you think people are so hesitant? to physically discipline their children a myriad of reasons depending on the situation i say a myriad of reasons one reason is um nobody wants to go to jail nobody wants to have like a, a record for whatever reason like let's just say you're beating a child and then like they move a certain kind of way you didn't expect and now you hit them somewhere you didn't want to and now they're like you got to take them to the hospital for whatever reason now now the people are asking you like what happened here and you're trying to explain to them what happened it's just like whoa you know things can be taken out of context and that and that aspect you also have the the depending on where you are like if you're out and you want to do on-spot correction somebody's sitting there like hey 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 you can't hit that child you know telling you what you can't do with your child because of whatever kind of reasoning they have. And now they're calling the Department of Child Services and you're losing your child because you love them enough to discipline them on the spot correction. Uh, down to what you said, laziness. Like, I know I should probably be getting after you right now, but I'm tired. I've been working all day and stuff like that. I really don't want to beat you. So, you know, whatever, you got that one off. Like, there's a myriad of different reasons why people do not want to correct their children. I mean, like, the, the list could go on and on and on on that one. So, what do you have anything that would be opposite? Anything more than what I've said? No, no, I, I was going to say, do. Do we like seeing our children act up in public? Like, is, is that something that's fun nowadays? I don't, I don't, I can't tell anymore because it's so often that you're out somewhere and somebody's chilled child is going bananas. You have the scenario where they're in the checkout line. I watched a video the other day of this little kid grabbing the thing going, ah, because he didn't get the toy he wanted. Is that what everybody enjoys when they go out in public to have their child go absolutely bananas? You know why that child's going absolutely bananas? Because they were never disciplined. They were never corrected. They were never punished for that kind of uh, 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 act reaction or attitude to have. And so they think it's okay. Not only do they think it's okay, but now how foolish are you looking? Because you have these people that are looking at you like, please get your child under control. Please, please address your child. Your child's acting crazy. Or, or, or touching all the produce, just going around touching all the fruit and vegetables everywhere. What, what, what are we doing? So I, th I think I think that is. I like you were saying, like, uh, the reason why I asked you to bring up the, the lady with the tattoo and then, you know, eating, get, getting the tattoo over feeding her children. The, to, like, like, this is like, like you said, this is a parallel to what we see every day when we're out and about and we see these kind of things not saying that it's this specific thing but sh nobody taught her obviously not because you don't you there's no way that you're going to sit there and not feed your child but get a tattoo the only thing that i could think of because well, i sat there when you told me that that bothered me for so long i i thought about it and thought about it and thought about it and not being there to be able to ask that kind of question i had to make my own assumptions and one of my own assumptions was thinking that this has to be a single mother um she has to be trying to get something like this like oh if i get this tattoo this will be another factor that will bring up my stake in a sexiness kind of way that'll be able to bring in maybe a, a male that will help me raise these children so this is a light investment into me being able to find a mate that'll help me be able to get these children like one of those things where like boy that was a stretch Oh uh, yeah, it's a stretch, but I'll just I'm just imagining what in the world because I can only think about it from where I'm at. What in the world could I possibly think would I do to get a tattoo 
overfeeding my child. And that's the only yeah. thing that I could possibly gather from just like, I mean, like I, I could be completely wrong here, but I, I don't know. But like, that's the only thing I could gather. Like, I'm going to try to do something to bring up my steak to be able to reel in a big fish that has some money and then they'll, they'll feed us for a lifetime or, you know, whatever, whatever the case may be. So like, that, I, that's I think, the only thing I could think of. I think, and, and you know, I'm not mad at you for going that route. I think you give her a lot of credit with that, that the, the, the tattoo Probably. was the investment into a <laughs> into life on the West side. We're going in the apartment in the sky type of feel here. <laughs> and, and the tattoo is our gateway into this thing. I think it's, I think what it comes down to, and all of us we been talking about it. We just ain't said the word yet. Selfishness. I want what I want and to heck with anybody else. And we have this thing about like, it's my life and I want to do what I want to do. Regardless, mm -hmm. I, I know that happens, not just in that scenario. Children are going hungry spiritually and physically because of selfishness of parents that could care less about their development. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. this is why we have a deep need in the youth because there aren't a lot of godly men and women raising children. And so by the time they're of 16 to 18 to 22, there is a deep need of guidance and there's no one that is doing it at all because there is still a level of not care in, in, in the people. Everybody's about self. I constantly think of this commercial and let me know if you've heard it. It's your money. Yeah. He and you it. want it now. JG Wentworth. <laughs> I have heard that commercial forever, and that speaks to our culture. It's your fill the blank in, and you want it now. To heck with your responsibility. You get you boo-boo, <laughs> and you have people throw up the YOLO signs and all this nonsense. Can we just get back to the basics and foundational scriptural fatherhood, child-rearing, marriage type stuff is not popular why isn't it popular because it takes work work the four letter word all the lazy people hate work i gotta go do work i'm only i'm only gonna work if it's making me money i'm not gonna work if there's not a transactional value here and raising my child i don't get paid for that mm. Mm. <laughs> I, am, I, am I right? It, we are oh, a transactional yeah. culture. Mm -hmm. Especially here in America. That's that's first world problems right there. I honestly, that's what it is. If you want me to do anything, where's the bread? There's, 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 <laughs> it's not about loving your neighbors. It's not about like just solid humanity. Just they think sometimes things have to get done and they're probably not going to come with monetary value. Please do that. Please do that. Please be a functioning citizen that, that cares and, and loves on people and understands that sometimes things just have to get done for the greater good. It does, it's, not, it's not always about, is that going to turn into something to be able to put in the old wallet? You know, the old billfold I need to you know, I got to have these greenbacks. Like, no, it's not always about money on everything. And honestly, like I said, that's first world problems. It has to have something to do with money. It does not matter unless it makes money. And that's terrible. It's terrifying and it's terrible that that's like a big motivator. That is the motivator here in America. It has to make money. If it don't make money, it don't make sense. And that's not true. That's not true. That is not true. We are an instant culture. We're like instant macaroni and cheese four minutes and you can eat. We are not a long game culture and raising children is long game. You don't see the fruit of that labor till way later. Our culture is not interested in that. That's why there's no fear of God, no fear of hell, because that seems like it's way off. That's way out there. I ain't worried about that till I get to 80. Like all of us are going to make it to 80, please. So because of that, it seems like we always push stuff off. I'll, I'll get with them the other day. I'll get with them tomorrow. I'll discipline them there. I'll discipline. And by the time you look back, they're 15 and they're doing what they want to do. And you're like, well, what, what, what happened? Let's do this. And like you said, when you're that age, you can't tell me nothing. 
I, I know this. I understand this. So like, do yourself a favor, all of you who are listening, train them while they're young, put in the work early. So you don't have to continue to do that level of discipline later. You've instilled it. The foundation is there. Our culture says, take it easy. You ain't got to be on it that hard, a little R&R. &R. And scripture says the exact opposite. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands Hold to rest. It. And poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. So if mm -hmm. that be the case, then you're putting off what could be done today and waiting till tomorrow, you will never get to it. Your children will raise themselves or somebody else will raise them and you will wonder where your life went. My, absolutely. My last thing that I wanted to say on top of what you just said there is, I don't know about you, but in my culture, I've seen it enough where the parents had their hand, they were kind of hands off raising their children. Then like you said, they got to 15, 16, maybe even 17 years old in the house. And then they're put out on the street. They can't say nothing. I can't say nothing to you. I'm trying to help you. You don't want to be helped. I can't do this no more. You got to go. Now that individual is on the street or out in the world doing whatever. And they're going to get hemmed up by the law or whatever. And then they're going to be around other people who are raised just the same or worse. And now what are we going to have? Eventually, however much time they're going to be in there for they're going to make those kind of connections and then be back on the street. And that cycle is going to continue because these people don't know how to be God fearing, uh, child rearing. They don't know. They have, they never seen it. So what are they going to do? The same thing that their parents did. They're going to have children. They're going to raise them crazy. And then they're going to put them out or they'll never, see. or they're going to just, have children and then never be there period and now these children are being raised by whoever grandma you know not even the mother sometimes not even the grandmother the great grand you know who who knows and it's just a cycle that continues and continues and continues man we have to we have to stop that cycle we have to we have to care enough to discipline our children to be there agreed it stops with us we can't keep blaming everybody else. We have to take responsibility for our actions. Say, and, and here's another thing. Admit when you've done wrong. Admit when you've done wrong and move forward. We can't keep living in this place of self-denial. Uh, I, I, not self-denial, but like denying when you've done something wrong. I can't really put that together, but you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah. My culture is a little bit of the exact opposite. We do coddling until they're 40. So no discipline, but spoon fed until they're 40 and they're living in the basement. So instead of putting them out, we've cemented them into literally the foundation of the house. So they're a part of the structure at that point. So it is, <laughs> it's just, we, we don't, we, we make sure they are in there. <laughs> It, it is it's literally the exact opposite of, of what you said it and is foundational. That's funny. <laughs> it, it's it's sad because that's when you see the videos of the 13 year old slapping his mother be quiet mom slap and the mom just sits there that's what i see in mind the absolute disrespect of authority and then the ability and that we continue to validate that by, oh, that's my baby. He has enough facial hair for a bird nest. He is not a baby anymore. He is able to work, pay bills, even though he's not doing any of that. He's able to do all kinds of stuff. But because you weren't hard on him, he never figured out that there were things that he needed to do as a man. See, we're not promoting manhood. We're promoting this sissified, milk toast human being that expects everybody to do it for him. And then when something goes wrong, we're a victim. It wasn't me. I'm a victim. Things just didn't work out. So therefore, it's got to be somebody else's problem. We have to stop this nonsense. We have to stop it in the church, coddling, let's call sin, sin. We have to stop it in the home, coddling, spank where spankings are needing. And we need to stop it in our culture. 
I, I understand. And everybody's afraid of the law because like you said, I can't walk up to somebody else's child and be like, that deserves a spanking and give them the old SWAT. Even if I go to the parent and be like, hey, look, check this out. You, you are very close in my AO and your child's acting completely wild. Can you please reel them in? There's a 50-50 chance that I am about to be physically assaulted in that scenario or 75 at least verbally to let me know at least verbally (laughs) to let me know exactly what i am not uh and so our job govern our home well so reeling it all the way back into our home your tyreek's home walter's home our home and our children we have an obligation biblically to discipline our children to put them on a path that they would continue on even when they're old. I can say that for my life. My dad was hard on me, thankful for it. He was hard on me. I was spanked. He raised his voice. He let me know when I did something wrong. And guess what? When I became in my 30s, I called him up and said, Dad, I want to say thank you for that. But guess what? He had to wait 30 years, 30 years. Yeah, 30 years. for his son to then call him and look him into his eyes and say, thank you for being hard on me. Because thank God we have FaceTime. So you could call and look somebody. <laughs> Go ahead and clarify that. Right no, oh, yeah. Hey, sometimes technology is a win. Uh, yep. So <laughs> there are times and he played the long game. He did what he was supposed to do. He raised me right. Was he perfect? No. But I know that no father is perfect the father exactly. so we lean on christ we lean on the word we do what it says and we continue on we have to be an example to our children like you said or they're going to look to someone else who is not a christian this goes back to our last podcast of tying yourself with unbelievers we're not going to get into this 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 podcast but that's what you let into your home dating friends of the children all of this it's your job to assess that scenario and say they're not going to be a good example of my child i I can't have you around my kid because you are going to lead them down paths that i have staunchly told them that is unacceptable in my house like you said man you when you when you have a house, you buy you buy the security system. You got the ADT. You got the guns if you want to protect your home, and you have a car. You got insurance. You drive safe. You you know you have all of these different things. You have investments. You make sure to put uh, uh, meters and stuff like that. If it starts to get this low, cut it off. You know all kinds of different things like that. But for your children, where is the care? Where 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 is the where exactly? Is the- Protection. Where is the love to like rear them and keep them and encapsulated in a great environment? Why are we not cultivating that kind of environment to raise and render and like and take care of our children? And, and like you said, the friendships and stuff like that. We're so far removed from everything. We don't. I, you and me, we've had this conversation. I said, I'm gonna know my children's friends you understand what i'm saying i'm going to under i'm going to understand your situation i'm going to understand the thought process when when that time comes i'm going to be involved in the situation there's not going to be this oh you know that's a friend from school good i'm going to know the friend from school's like religion i'm going to know his parents his or her parents i'm going to there's going to be a vetting process why because there's a vetting process in my life if they are my child is too young to be able to understand a vetting process i have to do that for my child if i don't do that what are we talking about here mm-hmm. if i do it for me why why if it's good for me it's not good for them and it also goes into the whole do as i say not as i do aspect that's a flawed statement nobody's going to do what you tell them if you don't do what you tell them to do it, it's it's you learn the most from observation, not not from just hearing somebody say something to you. I need to be able to also see you play out what you do. If you don't, it doesn't matter. Is 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 just words. So yeah, that's a 
for me though but yep that that's basically what i just wanted to lay out one of the last things is like you we we can't just talk about it we also have to put this in practice children need to see it done this whole do as i say not as i do thing that's not going to work it's not going to work we have to lead from the front we have to be examples mm -hmm. if we're telling them to follow jesus like i tell my children the only way to have life is through Jesus. They have to first see that in their dad. Mm -hmm. Because like you said, that whole do as I say, not as I do, that's trash. Yeah, that's trash. I want to live how I want to live, but I want you to be better than me. So do the right thing because I'm not going to. What? That they're going to they're going to say, well, mom and dad did this. So, yeah, of course, I'm going to do this. Of course, I'm mm -hmm. going to whatever you guys did that. You have to set the precedent in your life. It's same as Christianity. It can't just be all yakety yak. You have to walk it, not just talk it. And that's with your children too. Be about it. Don't just talk about it. So that's all I have for you guys tonight. And we are going to continue to bring you these harder controversial topics. And so I hope you continue. I hope you share, like, and subscribe. Guys, I would love to um, interview some people. We've been working on that. I know I said that, so I want to address that. We are working on that. Um, it's a lot harder than I thought <laughs> to secure people <laughs> to interview. Uh, so we are continued to work on that. Um, so uh, me and Tyreek are just thankful to be here and for you guys to be a part of our process and, and, and talking about the word. But guys, like always, yeah. God bless, and we love you.